Hello, it's Sunday night, and if you don't know me, I'm Alex Morton, and I have a message tonight called Seeing Through a Prophetic Lens. And we're going to speak about what it is to see in the prophetic realm, to see in the spirit realm. And I speak about these things so much on a regular basis because I want you to understand that there's a world all around us that goes beyond the natural, where there's angels and demons at, at work fighting for our souls. And the Holy Spirit is at work moving, healing, restoring, saving, and delivering. And I want you to understand that we need to be on the right side of that battle. We need to partner with Jesus. We need to partner with the Holy Spirit. And we need to even partner with angels that are ministering to us and to those who are members of the body of Christ. So seeing through a prophetic lens is about seeing the unseen. It's about hearing past what is heard in the natural. So we need to understand that there's more to be heard, there's more to be seen, and how do we do that? We do that by tapping into the supernatural power of God. And let's get started here. I have so much more that I want to reveal, so much more that I want to teach tonight, and I'm excited about this message. Hallelujah. Kito rombo bo shandarambashe bo koto rambase si bo sontarambasata. Father God, I thank you for this message. I thank you for the passion that you have given me to serve God. Give that passion, impart that passion to those who are watching, Lord. That passion comes from being transformed from the inside out, Lord. You've changed us. You've restored us. You've delivered us, Lord. You've made us and caused us to be born again. We are new people. The old has passed away, Lord. We do not walk in condemnation, Lord. We walk in your power, in your Holy Spirit power that has empowered us to go out and do your work, Lord to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to cast out devils, to preach the kingdom, to preach the gospel. Lord, send out more laborers, raise up more laborers, and send them out into the harvest fields. Lord, that is my prayer. And my prayer is break our hearts for those who are lost. Draw the backsliders back home, Lord, and draw those who don't know you unto yourself. Draw them unto yourself by the power of your Holy Spirit. Anoint my words. Anoint what I'm speaking tonight. I don't want to speak from my flesh. I want to speak from what you have for the people tonight in the prophetic realm. In Jesus' mighty name, I ask and I pray. Amen. So first of all, if you aren't a prophetic person, you probably won't understand some of the things I'm talking about tonight, and that's okay. I want you to know this is the perfect time to learn about the prophetic. You may have grown up in a church, uh, or may you did, maybe you didn't grow up in a church at all, but maybe you grew up in a church that was against the gifts of the Spirit, or didn't know too much about the gifts of the Spirit, so they shut down all forms of prophecy. Maybe they shut down tongues. Maybe they shut down uh, the prophetic in general, uh, and those spiritual things that people uh, you know, were attempting to do in the congregation. But I want to teach you these things because the prophetic is not taught on enough. And uh, I have a good friend named David, David Hallam, uh, a good friend named David Hallam, who was the senior uh, evangelist at Christian Equippers International for quite some time. And, you know, he is a mentor to me. He has taught me many things about the prophetic. And some of the things I'm going to be sharing tonight are things that he has uh, taught me and poured into me. So I just want to give him recognition in that. And let me tell you, first and foremost, we all can prophesy. Not only those who, who go by the title or the office of a prophet can prophesy, we all can prophesy as born-again believers, as followers of Christ. So when you operate in the prophetic, you must have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying. You'll see and recognize things others don't. When you get activated in the prophetic, when you begin to operate in the prophetic, when the Holy Spirit touches your spirit and you begin to see things past the natural, you begin to see things where people say, you know, that's strange. Why are you saying that? Why are you, why are you saying you see this and you hear this? Why do you hear these voices? It's not about hearing a voice. There's thoughts that come into our minds that we know aren't of us. But if they line up with the Word of God, if they line up with the nature of God, then they're probably of God. Okay, That's the first thing we need to know is, does it line up with the Word of God? Does it have the character and nature of God with it? 
and those are things where we need to test the, the prophecies that come forth. Test the spirits and test the prophecies. So I recently had the opportunity to witness uh, to a young man who had a lot of questions about God. I answered his questions and explained some of the encounters he had. He had a lot of encounters uh, with spiritual things and even a demonic encounter that he couldn't quite understand or explain and he had questions for me. So he's gone to pastors. He told me he's gone to pastors and leaders for answers, but no one knew what to tell him. Uh, and I thank God I was able to speak from a place of experience. And that, you know, I, I don't want to put any kind of burden or, or, or you know, call any pastor or leader at, or at fault. I don't want to say they're at fault for this. But I do want to say we need more teaching in the prophetic. We need to have more prophetic people pouring into the congregations, into the people that, are, that want to learn. Because we need to discern the spirits that are at work in our churches in our small groups, in the streets, and in our circle of influence as we go throughout our day in our job, um, you know, in the, in the grocery store, at the gas station. We need to discern spirits. And when we're moving in the prophetic, more people will be saved because it's a sign and a wonder to those who are unbelievers that don't yet uh, believe, that don't, haven't yet put their faith in Christ. So I am a person who knows a lot about the spirit realm. And I don't say that in pride, I say that in humility because I've had many encounters with Christ. I've had many encounters with the Holy Spirit. I've had many encounters with the demonic, unfortunately, because of some of the decisions that I've made, some of the things that I've got caught up in uh, from a young age with drugs, with alcohol, with violence. And when you get involved with those things, the enemy comes to oppress and take control of your life and then you need to break free. You need to get out of that. You need to, to be unburdened. You need, to, you need the Lord to break you out of that bondage. Hallelujah. So spirit cries to spirit and deep cries to deep. After speaking with the young man about his life, I prophesied over him. And the Lord revealed enough that the man understood he had a purpose and a plan. He had uh, a purpose and a plan that God had for him. Okay, God had a destiny for him. God has a plan and a purpose for each and every one of us. But God began to reveal through the words I was speaking what that destiny was. Okay, in fact, this man had a heavy, this young man had a heavy deliverance anointing. And those who have a deliverance anointing face mental battles more than others. Heavy intense mental battles and I've gone through that myself the enemy wants to take your mind so he can take everything else that's where he starts he begins by implanting thoughts injecting thoughts to get you off track and when after he does that when he does that he begins to try to take your emotions your will and everything that you possess but we need to give all of that over to Christ we need to give all that we are over to Jesus that he can be the Lord of our life that he can lead and guide us because if he's not leading and guiding us, eventually the enemy will. So after I prophesied over him, after I laid hands on him, he confessed that he had never experienced this kind of power that he was experiencing as I prayed for him. He actually got slain in the spirit right there uh, as I prayed for him. So why am I telling you this? Because without the prophetic, I wouldn't have been able to impact to impact this man's life like I did. If I wasn't able to see what was unseen, to hear past what was heard, I wouldn't have able, been able to discern the anointing and what God had called this young man to. I wouldn't have been able to, to speak about things that I didn't know in his life. And when I gave those, uh, those insights and those revelations that I was receiving in the Spirit to this young man, he believed in Christ all the more you know he started off in the conversation saying yeah I kind of believe in Jesus and you know I just don't know where I'm at you know I grew up in church and I don't know what to believe and after I got done speaking with him sharing with him my my testimony uh, and the things that I've been through and prophesying over him he placed his full trust and faith in Jesus and like I said without the prophetic that couldn't have happened 
So I want you to understand how important and powerful the prophetic truly is. So please turn with me next to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Sita ramba bashindo romboku. Danish, thank you so much for joining. Jesus loves everyone. Yes, it's true. Jesus loves us. He died on the cross for us, and He wants to walk with us in everything we do, in every situation, in every moment of our day. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1 says this, Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. Especially that you may prophesy. So Paul first mentions that we should pursue love. Without love, the gifts will cease. That is, we cease to operate in them without love. When we walk in love, we walk in the Spirit. But when we, when we fail to love, we fail to live according to the pattern and example that Jesus has set for us. Next, Paul says, desire spiritual gifts. And speaking from experience, I would say God wants to impart gifts to us. Just as our earthly fathers are happy, they're full of joy as we open gifts on our birthday, on Christmas, or whatever the occasion might be, our Heavenly Father is so happy, He's so full of joy, He sings over us. He wants to see us open these gifts that He has provided for us by sending His Holy Spirit to be our advocate, to be the one that provides uh, in supernatural provision and empowers us. So God wants to impart spiritual gifts, but He wants to see that you desire them first. There's not much that you're going to get from God unless you desire those things from Him first. Those who desire spiritual gifts with pure intentions will receive them. If your intention is to make a name for yourself, it'll never work. God sees right through that. He sees to the heart of a man. Hallelujah. In most of the churches throughout the U.S., we're taught that if a gift just begins to function or operate, we should go with it. But it's rare for a leader to tell their people to desire the gifts of the Spirit. I think leaders fear losing control, or at least that's what I've seen. But remember, you never had control to begin with. If you're a pastor, you never had control to begin with. You might have some form of control over the people, but control ultimately leads to manipulation, which is a form of witchcraft, and you don't want to get involved with that when it comes to leading your congregation. Your ministry is God's ministry. You're meant to feed the sheep, but Jesus is the shepherd. And that's something that we need to get. Jesus is the shepherd, not us. Yes, we lead, yes, we guide, but the true shepherd is Jesus. Now let's jump down to verse 3 in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, which says this, But he who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men. So in other words, a person who prophesies instructs, encourages, persuades, and comforts. For a believer to prophesy, they must first see the unseen and hear what hasn't been spoken. What hasn't been spoken in the natural. What hasn't been seen in the natural. And what I mean by that is you need to tap into the supernatural power of God. You can't prophesy from your mind or from your heart because those things can be corrupted. Your mind can be corrupted. Your heart can be corrupted. The scripture says that our heart is full of evil things. That the natural heart of man is full of evil. Evil intentions. That's why my prayer each and every day is, God, purify my mind, my heart, and my spirit. God, purify my intentions. Because when we have those pure intentions, God will come and move in the miraculous as we flow and move in His love. Now please turn with me to 2 Peter, the book of 2 Peter. We're going to go to 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 20 and 21. Again, 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 20 and 21. And they say this, Knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation, or no man's interpretation. 
For prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. And some interpretations say carried along by the Holy Spirit. So these, these scriptures teach us that we can't discern what is spirit by interpreting those things from our own perspective, from our fleshly or carnal perspective. Instead, we are to submit to the Holy Spirit and be carried along by Him. And the Spirit of God will work to confirm the words that you've spoken are inspired by Him. I don't know if you've ever experienced that. I have many, many times. The Holy Spirit needs to confirm what you're saying. As you speak those things, there's going to be a heavy anointing. There's going to be something that you feel in your spirit as God confirms those things to you. On the other side of that, there's going to be a check in your spirit sometimes. When you're going in the direction or speaking things that are not of God, you're going to have an uneasy, uncomfortable feeling in your spirit at times, which we would call a check in our spirit. And then we need to slow down, we need to pray about that, we need to discern why are we getting jammed up, why are we being stopped in that moment by the Lord. So one thing to remember if you're just beginning to operate in the prophetic is that it's better to start prophesying in teams. Okay, If possible, that way you're feeding off one another. If it's possible that you have other people that are interested in the prophetic, it's better off to start off in teams, that you feed off one another. There is what I would call an ebb and flow in the prophetic, in the spirit where you may hear something from God and then there's a time where you don't hear anything for a minute or two and there's a bit of a pause and that's when someone else can get a word and jump in. So as you prophesy to that person, there's a few different people there giving a word. You know, you give a word, the next person gives a word, the next person gives a word and you feed off one another in the spirit and that person that you're prophesying to is truly exhorted, edified, and instructed by the Holy Spirit. And there's nothing, uh, there's nothing there where you're going to feel like, you know, why wasn't God continuing to move? And, but as you begin to move in the prophetic on a regular basis, you'll see that there's not as many pauses. Sometimes the Lord does say, pray about this. Sometimes the Lord does say, wait on me to hear a word. So, okay, so we're not just supposed to speak whatever comes to mind because a lot of the things that come to mind are not of the Spirit, they're of the flesh, they're of our own mind. We don't want to speak from our own mind, we want to speak from the mind of Christ. So let me just tell you that. This kind of prophetic team helps to encourage and stir each person involved. Some people begin to prophesy and soon after stepping out, give up on it altogether. And I don't want you to get discouraged. Okay, prophesying takes practice practice. There's some people that come to me and will say, you know, a prophet once spoke this over me and it didn't come to pass. People are imperfect. We are all human beings. Just because someone calls themselves a prophet or they're called a prophet or called as a prophet doesn't mean they have 100% accuracy. Nobody has 100% accuracy. Someone who is given the title of a prophet Okay, and let me just say this for a moment. If someone is a self-proclaimed prophet, I would beware, I would be careful. Because a lot of people want to make a name for themselves. But someone who has been uh, validated as a prophet, has been very accurate, that person is going to have a higher accuracy than someone who is just a prophetic person. Okay, I'm a prophetic person, but I'm not a prophet. I function mainly in the title of, or, or role of an evangelist. But I don't care if you call me Evangelist Alex or Pastor Alex or just Alex. You know, I don't care what you call me as long as you're respectful to me, but I don't go by a specific title. People that go by titles, uh, for the most part, are usually, usually dealing with a pride issue. Okay? So we want to be careful with that. We want to be very careful uh, with expecting 100% accuracy because the Holy Spirit is always correct but sometimes our emotions and minds get in the way of what God is speaking through us so let me share a couple of verses with you that make it very clear that we are to prophesy as followers of Christ let's turn to 1st Corinthians chapter 14 verse 31 1st Corinthians chapter 14 verse 31. So we're back in, in chapter 14. We're jumping all the way down to 31. 
Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. While you're turning there, I want to tell you, and I'm going to share this with some of you who question, you know, there's people that have questioned me, why do you speak in tongues so boldly? Why do you speak in tongues without an interpretation? And sometimes the Lord does give me an interpretation to the tongues I'm speaking. But I speak in tongues boldly because I don't believe the point that Paul was making in 1 Corinthians 14 was not to speak in tongues without interpretation. I believe the point he was really trying to make was prophesy is a greater prophesying is a greater gift than tongues. To prophesy or to move in the gift of prophecy is a greater gift than tongues. Because the people are more edified, the people are more built up. They receive more through prophecy. And when I speak in tongues, people are delivered, people are healed, and people hear a sign of the supernatural. So that's why I've made that decision for myself, but we all need to make a decision when it comes to the supernatural things of God. 1 Corinthians 14.31 says, For you can all prophesy one by one, so that all may learn and all may be exhorted. And now let's go on to Joel chapter 2, verse 28. And that says, And afterward I will pour out my Spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. So Joel is talking about a time in the last days. He's talking about the last days when the, when the Spirit of God will be poured out on all flesh. And when Jesus got to the right hand of the Father and he sent down the Holy Spirit, that was the time where the last days began. Yes, we're living in the last days, but the last days had begun far before we were born here in this generation. And Joel, as he, speak, he speaks here, he's talking about prophesying. He's talking about dreams and visions. He's talking about prophetic dreams and visions. Where it's not just a dream, these dreams aren't just literal. There's a spiritual and figurative interpretation. Okay, And that's one of the gifts that I have is to interpret dreams and visions. And God gives me dreams and visions on a regular basis. If there's, that's something that God is doing for you, you may not know it. You may just think these dreams are so strange, they're so weird, they have no meaning. Pray into it. And God will begin to, to reveal the spiritual meaning behind these things. But you need guidance from the Holy Spirit. And get around other people that can interpret dreams. Get around other people who are of sound doctrine. Get around other people that know the Word of God. Because when people are interpreting things without knowing the Word of God, without making sure it lines up with the Word of God, that's when we get into heresy and unsound doctrine. So we all need to see through a prophetic lens, brothers and sisters. We all need to see through this prophetic lens. If we plan on living according to God's will, His divine will, each and every day. Each day we have an assignment whether we recognize it or not. Again, we can either live out each day according to our own interpretation or what we think we should do in that day. Or we can submit to the leading of the Holy Spirit and ask Him to make us sensitive to what He is speaking, what He is doing, what He is revealing. So next week, um, I'm going to be speaking about the prophetic again, but I'm going to speak about attacks on the prophetic and what we are to do to defend ourselves from the attacks of the enemy namely Jezebel, because Jezebel is the one demonic spirit that comes against the prophetic, I would say in the strongest way, but we are not to fear. We are not to fear because Jesus is the one fighting for us. Jesus is the one going out before us, who's behind us, who's all around us, hallelujah. He's the one with the firepower. You know, our strength runs out real quick, but Jesus is he never runs out of strength. He never runs out of resources. He never runs out of soldiers. Hallelujah. So let's put our trust in Him. Now I want to pray for you that you begin to see and hear and move in the prophetic in a greater and deeper way with God. And I want to lead you to Christ. If you want to give your life to Christ tonight as you're watching this, maybe you're watching this later on on YouTube or on Facebook, or on some other social media platform, I want you to know Jesus. If you feel the Holy Spirit is drawing you in, if you don't even know what this is, but there's something pulling at you, there's a supernatural power that's pulling you in, 
and telling you to give your life to Jesus, let's do it. But first, I want to activate you in the prophetic. Father God, may each person watching tonight re receive a prophetic impartation that they may see past what is seen, that they may hear past what is heard in the natural, God. Lord, may they have prophetic dreams and visions, and also may they receive the interpretation, Lord. May they, may they receive the interpretations in to of tongues and prophecies, God, and may they discern the spirits, Lord. May they discern uh, what it is that they are hearing these prophecies, God, from themselves, from their own spirit, from other people, God, and help them, God, to have a hunger and a thirst for your word, Lord. Help them to have a hunger and thirst for the things of God and not the things of this world. Because the things of this world are temporary. The things of this world pass away, but your word never passes away, Jesus. You never pass away. You never give up, God. So, Lord, as we move forward in the prophetic, open our eyes. Help us to see through that prophetic lens where everything becomes clear, where everything becomes a revelation from what you are showing us, what you are revealing in the Spirit. Lord. I thank you, Father, for just igniting fires all around the world through this message. I thank you for opening eyes that were blind to the spiritual realm tonight. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And if you want to receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior tonight, say this prayer with me. The words are very important, but it's more important what you have in your heart. If you believe these things in your heart, and you say them, you shall be saved. Now, please say this prayer with me. Father God, I believe that Jesus is your son. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. Lord, forgive me of my sins. Jesus, I believe you rose from the grave and that you are Lord forevermore. I commit all that I am, all of my life to you, Lord. And I choose to follow you for all of my days. Lord, give me the strength that I need to follow you and to not turn back in Jesus' name. Amen. So you need to believe and you need to follow Jesus. Repent, believe, and follow him. Those are three steps that you need to take. You can believe, but you need to confess. You need to ask God to forgive you. And if you just said that prayer, you did ask God to forgive you. You're now clean. You're now washed clean by the precious blood of Jesus. And we are not to walk in condemnation. I have people remind me of the old me from time to time, and I tell them, I don't remember that. You know what? God doesn't remember that, and I don't need to look back. I look forward, my eyes on the prize, that I may finish the race the way that God has me to finish my race, the way that God has called me to finish my race. So don't you dare look back, and don't you dare forget where the Lord brought you from. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for joining me. And I hope that you see more clearly in the Spirit.